I don't feel like people see Oakland or our people for who they really are. Everybody sees us as criminals and we're threats. I'm hanging. You better hurry up. You better get there to class before I do. I got your stuff. Come see me after school. As a system, we're like, we have to look at, we're suspending far too many black boys. What do we need to do? What do we need to do differently? American males are located in an environment that doesn't have their best interests in mind and you have to have very targeted strategies for those students that are furthest away from opportunity. What comic book did I relate Malcolm and Martin to? X-Men takes place in the Civil Rights Movement, right? So you got Professor X who believes what? Everyone is equal. Same ideal as King. When we first started, a lot of our kings, when we were doing listening campaigns, were sharing that they didn't have access to African American men. And so having an African American male teacher during the school day, Monday through Friday, is just an immediate win. At lunch for BSU. So folks who ain't showing up. In order for a student to thrive, they have to know that they can speak freely. It feels good to them that somebody's holding them accountable. Growing up here is amazing. I love Oakland. I grew up in a single parent household. My mom worked uh, hard to, to make sure that I had a good life. There'll be a whole bunch of times where I think that here in Oakland, uh, I could have just gave up, I could have quit, but she wouldn't allow it to happen. I was kind of forced into the class because in 10th grade, I wasn't really doing so well. If I kept getting F's and D's, I wasn't going to be able to go to college. Rick and I had this small little connection and closeness. I told him, I said, hey, over the summer, if you need anything, call me. He called me maybe a couple of weeks later. But then he tells me, he says, my mom's not doing so hot. Then about a week and a half later, he calls me back and he says, my mom's passed. At that point, I was so rude and disrespectful. I don't think I even had anybody else to call. I asked him one simple question. I said, what are you going to do? How are you going to live your mother's legacy? They mention you here in this article. I was almost kicked out of high school. I thought I was always going to be able to get away with stuff and not have consequences. AJ was a hothead. Really smart, great potential. He has a real fire and he had a real passion. And he just needed to be heard. Mr. Hancock was like, there's going to be a lot of opportunities that pass you because you never want to listen to nobody. People always said I had potential, but never put me in a situation where I can see that for myself. Most of all of these letters are just letting me know I've been accepted into all of these schools. Some of them are scholarship information. My major that I'm gonna study is nursing. I like helping people because I know how it feels when you're down and out, and you can always use that extra boost. I basically had nothing. I felt like I put a lot of stress on my mom. It was time for me to change. I don't know how he did it, but going from underperforming to being a 3.8 GPA student says that I got innate potential, I'm a king. I've been living with my sister since my mom died and my niece. It's nice to have her around and I can start off by helping her. He wants to defeat the stereotype 
that's often put on young brothers that are here in, in Oakland. What makes me want to get out of Oakland so bad is just I'm tired of seeing a lot of people being murdered over stupid things. I don't want that to be my story. Whatever I obtain and when I get older, I'm going to come back to Oakland. Part of being a leader is being able to tell your story. Because when you tell your story, you connect with other people. And when you connect with other people, what happens? You build relationships. You build relationships. I know you talked about how you like school and stuff. Is it hard for you? Like, kind of hard. People that want to stop me from getting my education. Just make sure that the people you hang around is the people that, you know, have the same common goals as you. So I guess we supposed to fill in this little book. I'll do it with you. You're not from America, you're from Africa. All right, talk to me. Tell me why. Because Europeans went over there. They had killed half of our people. Yeah, took some of our people and they brought them to like the southern parts of the U.S. That's what I'm talking about. It was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I've really made a connection with him, and I plan on being his mentor, and I plan on working with him from now on. Today is tryouts, and on Wednesday I find out if I make the team. I've been playing basketball since my freshman year, and I really want to hoop. So with AMA, they just, they just gave me the courage to do it and to try it. For me, hope for my mom, so you know I got hope and she'll come watch me. You can't really do nothing by yourself. You know, you need people around you, you need supporters. Here's your focus right now. Uh, the schools that you want to go to and then financial aid, scholarships, stuff like that. Let's take it back two years ago. Did you see yourself here in this position to where uh, all these schools are, are pulling you and saying, hey, come on? I didn't really think I was going to go to college, actually. I'm going to be the first one, so I'm going to be the first generation. So I thought I was just going to ride along with the fam, not going to college. I feel like I'm making the right decision. 